evening and thanks for joining us on Dialogue. This is a program that engages topical issues that are dominating our national discourse. Uh, my name is Shafiu Suleiman. And um, today on the platform, we'll be uh, discussing uh, a forthcoming book launch. We'll be also discussing the polity and of course the economy uh, with a very special guest who will be joining us in a moment uh, to have an interface on the platform this morning. Um, I will unveil the guest as soon as he arrives. Uh, but the fact that uh, the program takes a look at trending issues, um, uh, the issues that are still trending in our country, Nigeria, of course, is the issue of um, substantially the insecurity in the northern part of the country, which is, uh, has become, since become a nightmare uh, not only uh, to the residents or to the uh, citizens of this part of the country, but also to the authorities uh, concerned. Now, the deteriorating situation uh, with regard to security in the northern part of the country is uh, becoming, you know, is quite worrisome and uh, requires um, a, a very urgent attention uh, looking at the sequence, you know, of happenings. Uh, attacks uh, happen left, right and centre of kidnappings, of killings, of, you know, and so on and so forth. Um, within the last couple of days, you know, a number of people have been abducted. Millions of Naira has exchanged hands as ransom. Uh, of course, some lost their lives in the process and, of course, sources of livelihood. This is a serious uh, concern uh, to the uh, people of this part of the country and uh, something perhaps need to be done, you know, uh, to nip this in the bud or to show that the government and the authorities concerned are really committed, you know, to tackling this uh, rising insecurity, which does not only affect the common man as it is today, uh, the armed groups are becoming more daring, you know, by the day, uh, attacking, you know, not only people on the highways, uh, not only the people in the villages, they are gradually moving inwards, also attacking institutions, um, you know, and then abducting people at will. Um, well, so this is a very serious uh, concern that uh, requires all hands on deck uh, to deal with be before it graduates into a full-blown, you know, uh, the authorities' concern are really um, overwhelmed, if I should put it that way, getting overwhelmed rather, uh, so, the ungoverned spaces are becoming more vulnerable and so on. Uh, one other trending issue is, of course, the... the ...led the country into a second recession. Uh, well, there have been a lot of uh, concerns in recent time. The, the discuss generally is around, you know, how to get out of this quagmire. Well, it is inevitable because a number of countries around the world uh, have, you know, uh, gone into recession as a result of uh, uh, the twin uh, challenges of COVID-19 and, of course, uh, the decline in oil revenue. Uh, Nigeria, as one of the producing oil-producing countries, has not gotten it right in terms of uh, diversifying the economy away from oil, which still accounts for almost 90% of the total revenue of the government. Uh, so when such happen, certainly the economy uh, would have to be uh, affected. And again, the COVID-19 pandemic has also put um, many countries on the edge. Economies are battling you know, to uh, recover from the shocks uh, that, the, that came with the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, Nigeria is not an exception. Uh, even though the country has done well in terms of managing the pandemic, so to speak, despite its perceived challenges and lapses uh, in uh, addressing the rot in its healthcare delivery uh, system uh, and, of course, uh, funding of the healthcare uh, uh, sector. Well, but that the shocks are, are still with us. A uh, substantial amount of uh, Revenue has been lost due to the months of lockdown, you know, that has affected, disrupted, you know, uh, uh, production and supply. That is where there is. Nigeria is um, lagging behind in terms of production. It seems to be 
uh, more of a consumer nation not than a producing nation. So these are some of the things perhaps that um, uh, put us where we are. But the authorities are telling us that uh, it's not going to last long. Uh, it might not you know, go beyond the first quarter of uh, next year. That is if uh, all things are being equal. Uh, so, but then, what are the parameters? What are the, is the government putting in place, you know, to ensure a quick recovery of the economy? Yes, it has done well in getting us back, you know, after the first recession uh, in 2015, 2016, there are about. Uh, so, uh, the mechanisms used, you know, to recover, to get the economy recover uh, uh, quickly and uh, was also put on the part of sustainable, uh, you know, pr I mean, rise. Uh, is something that uh, we need to revisit and perhaps even uh, consolidate on. Um, before the coming of the pandemic, the country was, you know, recovering and uh, fast recovering, uh, recovering its place, you know, uh, as, as, as one of the leading economies. I mean, the leading economy in Africa, uh, beating the South African economy, which was uh, either to uh, the leading economy in Africa. So, um, all hands again must be on deck here. All the critical stakeholders must put their thinking cap. The authorities concerned must uh, sit well to see how uh, you know they can come up with strategies that will get the country out of uh, this uh, current recession uh, because of um, the fact that uh, the country's economy already is fragile and with this uh, it will affect so many sectors. Uh, so this is it. Um, these are some of the trending issues, but that's just like I told you, uh, uh, that's not our talking point actually, uh, even though in the course of our discussion we will also be talking about the economy, the polity and the book launch, uh, the upcoming book launch. And I will be having in the studio in a moment, uh, Dr. Dukuku Peterside, uh, you know, former Director General and uh, CEO of uh, Nigeria Maritime Administration and Safety Agency Nemasa. Um, I understand perhaps he's making his way into the studio at the moment. So we'll take a short break uh, perhaps to introduce him uh, to you. Uh, stay tuned. We'll be back in a moment. Social media are platforms on the world wide web or device applications that are designed to allow users to create, share and consume contents. The use of social media has doubled in the last decade around the world as it has become the go-to avenue for communication and information sharing. It is also a way of connecting with like-minded people from different geographical locations, grids, ethnics and religious cultural backgrounds. Social media has made it easier to connect with friends, family and businesses. It has become a unique way of empowering the Nigerian youth. This has over the past few years contributed to nation buildings. Respondents have this to say about these new forms of empowerment. Where you are online? Okay, um, I normally visit the WhatsApp because I like it very much. Um, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Skype. Like I use Facebook, Instagram, like Snapchat, Twitter, and the rest. I use Facebook and WhatsApp. Okay, I do, I do WhatsApp and Facebook. On the use of social media, I think the females are more on the social media than the male. This is because um, you find females, they spend more time 
on the social media. Like me, I use the Facebook more often. Ladies, the ladies are more in social media than the male because the ladies would like to see the design. We want to talk about check the fashion, the new fashion, clothing, like the clothes, the shoes, the designer, the new latest design clothes they see in the medians. They would like to talk about it. And again, we would like to check about the celebrities, the songs. very much for staying with us on the platform dialogue and this morning we have uh, in our studios a very special guest talking about dr the kuku peter side the immediate past director general and ceo of nimasa a former house of representatives member and a prolific writer uh he's joining us in the studio this morning to talk about three key issues perhaps uh an impending book launch the polity and the economy uh thank you for joining us Thank you very much and good morning. Very, very much welcome. Um, well, let's start from this end. You know, a number of people, uh, you know, would, would want to hear from you. How has it been, you know, life after retirement, for instance? <laughs> Did you say life after retirement? <laughs> well, <laughs> yes. Life after exit uh, okay. from, from the Nima Nigeria Maritime Administration and Safety Agency in Nimasa. Right. Okay. It's been very interesting. Okay. Um, unfortunately, mm. I've been in public service for a fairly long time. Right. And within the period, I lost a lot. Mm. A lot in doing the things I love most. Okay. Reading is one. Mm. Writing is another one. I lost a lot of time spending mm. quality time with family. That's right. I lost a lot of time connecting with old friends so mm. this gives me an opportunity to reconnect with yeah. old friends mm. read the books i've had on my shelf for a very long time mm -hmm. um, write you know contribute to public National discourse, discourse right. on important issues right then within that short period i was able to write document mm. some of the most transformational initiatives we embarked upon mm. in nimasa you know we try to model African management, how, how it works, works within, within the context, context of, of our own, own cultural, cultural situation. So we documented our experience so that others can learn from the areas where we made mistakes mm. and areas where we succeeded. Yes. So that's how we spent quite some time. Mm. We've also had a, a number of speaking engagements. Mm. Um, we were in Brussels to mm. uh, speak to a group of people on maritime security. Mm. Um, we were in Paris recently, mm. we were in London, so we've also had a number of uh, speaking mm. engagements outside the country. Mm. Those are things that have kept us busy for now. Then we are rebuilding mm. some of our private things that we had neglected over time. That's right. Uh, so, so uh, it's just very, very much busy, you know. Oh, I, 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 I tend to think that I'm busier now than when <laughs> I was in public office. <laughs> That's right. Okay. Uh, let, let's, since you've, uh, you know, let the cat out of the bag, you know, a uh, strategic turnaround, a story of a government agency. What, uh, you talked about the motivation now, the need to keep something for record purposes for people to also uh, tap from the experiences. Um, it is, uh, you know, rare to see, you know, public officers, you know, uh, doing such a thing. Uh, why, what's the inspiration behind this? Well, the strategic turnaround mm. is a story, is a narrative. It's a narrative because we want mm. everybody to read and appreciate the book. We don't want to make it a theoretical document. Mm. We don't want to make it very academic or very technical. Mm. Um, maritime industry is a highly technical area. Mm. But we have to tell a story that the layman will read and appreciate and understand the reasoning behind our action. So it's a 300-page mm. narrative okay. of the highlights of some of the turnaround or reform initiatives we embarked upon mm. in Nimasa. Mm. Whether it's in the area of regaining our reputation, mm. which was said to be on life support before then. Mm. You know, if you recall, before mm. 2016, mm. Uh, Nimasa's reputation mm. was literally mm. on life support. Okay. 
Or is it our people <laughs> that were demotivated, okay. heavily demoralized, mm. and um, we applied principles that they use in training um, warriors mm. pre pre colonial times, mm. whether in in the Maasai tribe of Kenya, mm. whether in the Ibani tribe or Ijo tribe mm. of Nigeria. There are principles they use in training the army. So, uh, their army, their right. local warriors. Yeah. Right. We applied those principles, you know, to raise the morale of our people, to equip our people. Today, our people are better off by our estimation. Mm. Now, or is it in, you know, in virtually every area of organizational life, we literally renewed the organizational life of the agency, applying known principles they are not necessarily principles that are consistent mm. with western management mm. style not conventional so not conventional mm. management uh, yeah. uh, western yeah. manage uh, management principles right you know so at the end of the day we developed a model what we call the nimasa model that anybody can look at and apply it so that's basically what we did the book documents all of those important mm. initiatives so the book mm. is not a narrative of everything we did in nimasa okay. it's not a narrative of our time in Nimasa. It is a narrative mm. of the important mm. turnaround initiatives or what you call reform mm. initiatives. You know, and there are 10 key reform initiatives we embarked on okay. in Nimasa. Mm. Now, the important thing is that we documented this book for five important reasons. So if you ask me what is the motiva motivation mm. for documenting our experience, mm. the first is that we wanted to share um, our failure, okay. the areas where we failed. Okay. You know, you're not just looking at the successes now. You're no. also looking at the challenges. The challenges. You know. Right. So, where are the areas we failed, and why did we fail in those areas? Mm. So that other people can learn from our experience. Mm. And speaking about failure, failure is not always bad. There are a lot of lessons to learn mm. uh, from failure. That's why when a child is given mm. birth to, if you learn to walk, mm. you know, as you stand up, you will come down. As you stand up, but you yeah. don't give up yeah. until you, you can You're walk firmly. Yeah. You it. know. And so if you follow that principle, so whenever you fail, you try again, mm. you know. Now, that's one, that's motivation number one. Mm. Motivation number two, well, number one is that not just only our failure, the mm. areas where we succeeded, what yeah. do we do mm. that we succeeded? You know, that's one. Now, two, is that the other thing mm. we discovered mm. is that the public service in Nigeria is modeled after the British system, yeah. but the cultural context is different. Okay. And so if we take the mm. British model, superimpose it in our own cultural setting, you won't, you won't get the result. Okay. Why? Because mm. the context is different. Mm. Our background experience is different. Mm. The environmental factors are different. And so there are things unique to our environment, our culture, mm. that need to dis determine how we manage things that's why in, in very often mm. there are nigerians who superimpose british or western management style do not always get it right there are things yes there are things that will work there are also things that we need to adapt to Perhaps our looking at the peculiarities and and of course absolutely. the realities on the ground absolutely mm. so but how do you um change this mentality and how do you get because it's difficult I, i'll right? come to it's, that it's already anchored on the the principles of the I, i'll come to that uh, okay now the other mm. thing that why we documented this experience mm. is so that people mm. can also know what worked for us and what did not work. Mm. You understand? Okay. The third mm. is that there are transformational leadership principles that are heavily embedded in the book. Okay. Now, we want people to understand how it was applied in our context mm. and how it delivered results. Mm. And so students of transformational leadership mm. will have things to pick from the book. So if you are interested in leadership, mm. if you are interested in leading, mm. you understand the principles of vision, mm. principles of getting your mission right, principles of goal setting, you know, the principles of transiting from a goal to result. It's not every time that you have a goal that you get to the result. The result right. so, which is the ultimate. Which is the ultimate. Mm. So how do you move from setting a goal mm. to achieving result? Now, there is something, a bridge, they are called the act of execution. Mm -hmm. How does that work in public organization or in public sector? You know, the act of execution is known in the private sector, but not very embedded mm. 
in the public sector. So it's something, how did you do it? Mm -hmm. That's right. You understand? Then the other important, so there are many reasons why we documented this. Then mm -hmm. the transformation that was done in Nimasa mm -hmm. involved a lot of persons. Mm -hmm. We needed to document that for posterity. Mm -hmm. It's not just about myself and my team or my team and I. It's not about members of the executive management team who served with me. Mm -hmm. There are many persons who contributed ideas, mm -hmm. who contributed their energy, mm -hmm. their passion, their zeal, their experience to the success mm -hmm. uh, story of Nimasa. So it's also important to document the role played by some persons. So, so that is well uh, documented mm -hmm. in the book. Right. Okay. Now, yeah. the other thing is that we developed a model mm -hmm. which we think that if other people look at our model, they can develop it further and apply it in other public sector of the region. So those are some of the motivations. There are, there are several, some of the motivations mm -hmm. why we documented the book. Mm -hmm. Now, you asked a question which I'd like to address. Mm -hmm. And when I said that we take the British model mm -hmm. and replicate it in Nigeria without adapting it to our own peculiar context. Mm -hmm. no, well, it's now time for us to develop our own indigenous mm -hmm. management mm -hmm. principles right. and leadership principles. Mm -hmm. We've always had one. Mm -hmm. And the book is laced with a lot of stories. I can tell you several of the stories um, in the book. And now, on the chapter on knowledge-driven organization, mm. we share the story of a local herbalist mm. who was so powerful mm. in, village, in the village, pre-European mm. times. Mm. At the time, malaria was a real threat in this particular village, and malaria was literally killing everybody. But this man was the only one who had the formula, who had who knew the herb that could cure malaria. So he was powerful. He didn't want to lose power. Everybody in the village was coming to him. Mm. He didn't share knowledge. And so, unfortunately for him, mm. you know, one day he got ill. He was struck by malaria. Mm. Um, as he was struck by malaria, mm. nobody could help him. No other person knew about the mm. formula or the herb mm. to cure him. Mm. He eventually died. He died with his knowledge. Mm. He died because he didn't share knowledge. He died because he wanted to retain the power of having choice land choice cow, choice everything in the village. He wanted everybody to village to continue to mm. behold to him. To monopolize everything. Everything. Mm. And so that's something wrong mm. when you don't share knowledge. Okay. You okay. can go to that extreme. Mm. That's, that's a critical one. Now, talking about sharing knowledge, and perhaps also sharing successes. Um, bottom line is, you adapt all of these models, you know, and, 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 and uh, I mean, policies and strategies to get the end result. Um, in sharing some of the achievements, perhaps, um, how does this work for you and the organization? What transformational, you know, uh, uh, results have we gotten from that application? All right, thank you very much. I can mm. simply mention ten. Okay. Number one, mm. for the first time in the past four years, mm. Nimasa's revenue mm. to the federal government mm. was all-time high. Okay. At Every point in time, mm. Nimasa remitted revenue in excess of 1,000% of what he used to remit before. Okay. Result number one. Mm. You multiply, you know, revenue. The, the, the income. Mm. Number two, consistently, throughout that period, Nimasa had the best record in the continent of Africa in post state control, which is our core duty. Now, we are rated by our regional post state control as number one consistently from 2017 to 2019. We had the best record in the area of enforcement, inspection, outcome of enforcement activities. Okay. Number two. Number three, mm. we became the first country in West and Central Africa to have a standalone mm. anti piracy law because of our legal reforms or reforms of the laws. Okay. We realized that the Titanic ship, the mm. popular Titanic ship, sunk and we lost over 1,500 lives, not because laws were not in place, the laws were there, but were outdated, mm -hmm. not because the uh, Titanic did not comply with the law, they did comply with the law, but they complied with outdated law. Okay. So we need to reform our laws. Mm -hmm. And one of the products of reforming our laws mm -hmm. is that for the first time, we now have a dedicated anti-piracy law, and we became the first country in West and Central Africa to have that. Mm -hmm. Three. Now, four, in terms of reputation, we all knew, uh, we know rather, Mm. where Nimasa's reputation was in 2016. If you call Nimasa, what will strike you will be corruption. What will strike you mm. is mismanagement. Today, Nimasa is one of the most 
reputable organizations in Nigeria and globally in the area of maritime administration. Mm -hmm. It is because we sat down now and did a diagnostic analysis of what the problem is with our reputation and said, where do we move from a soiled reputation to a reputation that will be admired and become a reference? Mm -hmm. we, after the diagnosis, we sought for help. We now did a rebranding program. Mm -hmm. And today, Nimasa is a different organization that is respected, not just locally, globally, from an organization that was literally disparaged to one that is admired and respected. Mm. Okay. Now I can go on. I yeah, just said okay. that. Talking about yeah, the success right. stories and, success and stories. how this model, you know, now, uh, impacted on your leadership uh, or the stewardship. Good. So I said I mentioned ten, and I'm simply just. Okay, yeah, so when you just, actually, yes. Okay. Now, Okay. Because of time, perhaps maybe we will not be able to get all of them. Okay. And the fact that uh, we have other issues also to talk about. So what you are saying literally is that uh, this book is embedded, I mean, with this uh, strategies. A lot of leadership lessons, yeah. a lot of management principles, mm. you know, a lot of strategy, mm. things you need to learn about goal setting. Mm. And it will also teach you right. how Africans, before the coming of Europeans, mm. had solid management and leadership principles right okay uh, it's about time we have to take a short break uh, perhaps to take uh, some commercial uh, commercials uh, the program is dialogue and this morning i'm dialoguing with dr Togoku peter side uh, the former director general ceo nimasa a former hasa perhaps member uh, we'll be back in a short while stay with us Gami himmiyar fada karwa da gami martaba sarkin jiwa Dr Idris Musa Fuwariya ba ce ta fi cutar mu ne ga yawancin wadanda suke mutuwa kan cutar na tunanin irin wadannan abubuwa idan suka warke shi yasa yake sa yawancin su masu mutu rashin sani a wasu bangare da rashin imani shi yake sanya wasu idan mutun ya kamu da cuta ya ta guzunta in ya warke kuma ai ya warke to da ka ba ba abin da zaka yi ka gude shi ka kamante shi Amanza ai hatsari ne gare shi hatsari ne gare ka ka tausaya mutumin da ya warke akwai lada mu saurare jawabin da hukuma ta lafiya take farwa don mu samu amfani da ita mu fadakar da iyayenmu yaranmu fadakar da iyayenmu da fatan Allah ya kawo mana saukin ya warware wannan abun ya raba mu da wannan cutar gaba da wannan sako ne daga ma'aikatan labaru da al'adu ta tarayya just like you didn't know Star Times offer pay as you go payment options, you might also have missed numerous fantastic channels we offer for family entertainment. Ladies can enjoy Star Life, Z Cinema, and Novella E Plus. We entertain your kids with Tsunami, Nickelodeon, a new channel DreamWorks coming this August. Star Times brings you news, drama, and documentary on Sky News, Fox, and Nat Geo Wild. We also offer top local content on AMC Movies, Isimbido, and Human Rights. That's not all. Sports lovers can enjoy Europa League, Bundesliga, FA Cup, NBA, and EFL on the ESPN channels. And here's the most exciting part. La Liga and UEFA Nations League are coming to Star Times this September. Join Star Times. Enjoy best content with pay as you go options for as low as 90 naira daily. Star Times. Enjoy digital life. Thank you very much for staying with us on Dialogue. And uh, today we are looking at uh, uh, an impending book launch. Uh, by the immediate past Director General of uh, NIMASA, uh, Dr. De Kuku Peter Said, uh, who has been giving us you know, an insight uh, regarding the contents of uh, this uh, very important uh, uh, stewardship book uh, called Strategic Turnaround, Story of a Government Agency. Uh, has been giving us some of the, uh, the inspirations behind the documentation and uh, what uh, 
uh, the, the book is also containing and how it's going to perhaps change or uh, impact on leadership, uh, I mean, drive of anybody who wants to, you know, learn from that experiences. Um, well, we'll talk about the book launch now proper. Um, yes, you've given us most of the, uh, some of the details, so to speak. Uh, when is this book coming up, you know, I mean, uh, going public? How do you intend to, to launch it? Uh, perhaps, uh, and I thank you, know. you very much. Um, Safari Books in Burden, mm. which is my publishers, okay. issued a statement last week mm. that the book will be made public mm. in January 2021. Okay. That's the next 30 to 45 days, mm. the book mm. will be made public. Okay. Um, that's one. Now, two is that leadership newspapers mm. and business day two leading newspapers in the country mm. are collaborating with a leadership organization development and leadership institute mm. to do a public lecture in my honor on the 28th of january in abuja here okay. and we are taking advantage of that public lecture mm. to present the book okay. not launch present mm. the book right. so um we'll be presenting it both virtually and physically physically mm. we've invited 200 persons mm. that will be in a hall but so many other persons can connect virtually and participate in the book presentation mm. after the book presentation we will be doing a leadership coaching tour based on the book okay. in six cities of the country that is being put together by safari books and some firm in lagos okay we will also be doing a, a leadership training tour of Kenya, Ghana, South Africa, and uh, which one is it? Four, four countries. So okay. we'll be doing based on the book. So we'll be teaching based on the book, how anybody can transform his or her organization, mm. how you can transform, whether it's public sector, private sector, whether it's a non-profit, uh, based on sound proven principles embedded in the book. The principles we adopted in transforming the mass. Anybody can apply it. Mm. The principles can be applied anywhere, anywhere, whether in public sector organization, private sector organization, and turn around organization. You can even apply it in your department. Mm. You know, the principles are the same. Right. One is that organizations must be repeatable to, for them to earn the trust of stakeholders, mm. customers, or clients. Mm. Organizations must be really wrong with people who are highly motivated, who are passionate about what they are doing, and who are equipped, who has the capacity mm. Uh, to do what they are doing now clearly organizations must know that outcome should drive activities not activities driving this thing so mm. at the end of the day it's not it shouldn't be about activities it should be about outcome and outcome simply means you know clearly the results you want to achieve mm. you know that these results can be measured quantitatively and qualitatively yeah. not just that you know the outcome mm. it can be measured qualitatively and quali quantitatively, quantitatively right. and clearly for every initiative for mm. every project for every organization you must have a clear roadmap mm. and that this roadmap must factor mm. the possibility of disruptions because things are changing mm. whether in technology you must also factor the fact that you must factor human capacity you must ca factor resources you must factor environmental context mm. and the entire gamut of social political forces right. in the environment mm -hmm. so these are principles that whether you're in public sector in private sector um, of course if you apply it and apply it in the right dosage in the right context you know and apply properly you will deliver results okay so right. we'll be going around mm. you know teaching based on the principles um embedded book this and these are principles that um mm. we've put to test and a number of them proved successful in Third, in a third world country where bureaucracy is deep, mm. politics is fickle, mm. and indeed there are too many challenges. Whether the challenge of mm. infrastructure, the mm. challenge of lack of data, mm. the challenge of lack of capacity, the challenge of corruption, those challenges are there, but yet we succeeded even in the midst of those challenges. Right. You, you talk about, you know, the interventions are huge, so to speak, um, looking at what you intend to do. And um, is it done, in, is it going to be done, you know, in partnership with perhaps other. Uh, uh, stakeholders or you just uh, single-handedly handling the project oh well I, i've said to you the book um reading sl slash leadership coaching tour is handled by safari books 
and um, an organization in Lagos, I've forgotten the name again, mm -hmm. they're handling they're handling that. I'm only going to make myself available, I and a few other colleagues, okay. uh, both within the country and outside the country. And so we'll be teaching based on the leadership principles embedded in the book. So I, I'm not handling it. You know, okay, my look. publishers are handling it and okay. um, the management firm um, that is also marketing the book is handling it and I think they're working in collaboration with the Development and Leadership Institute. Okay. So they will, they will be handling the Reading Stroke Leadership Coaching Tour around six cities in Nigeria. Yeah. Um, an organization in the UK is handling the one across Africa. Okay. Okay. It's coming at a time, you know, the country is has uh, deep into second recession, so to speak. And with the potentials we have in the oil and gas sector mm. and perhaps the mm. maritime industry, mm. um, uh, you know, experts are, are worried. Why is it that uh, we are unable to diversify our economy away from oil, perhaps? Uh, the maritime sector is key, you know, to driving the necessary revenue uh, that will keep the the country going but unfortunately today uh, despite all of this uh, things that have been putting in place and others you know that that uh, critical sector Nigeria is still deep into recession um, where are we getting it wrong well we're getting it wrong in many dimensions mm. I, I'll just point out a few mm. number one is that for a very long time as a country um, we have been a mono product economy there's not been a deliberate and sustained, I choose two words, mm. deliberate and sustained program to divert the economy away mm. from being oil and gas dependent mm -hmm. or crude oil export dependent, not mm. even oil and gas dependent, mm. crude oil export dependent. Right. That's number one. Now, number two is structural. It has to do with the nature of the market. Our market on paper is supposed to be a capitalist market or a capitalist economy mm. but in reality the level of regulation mm. is such that people don't have confidence to invest in this market mm. what do i mean by nature of regulation now whether is in the area of electricity and i will speak to infrastructure later mm. whether it's the area of electricity you cannot come in make your investment and leave take your profit and leave when you come in into the electricity sector mm -hmm. it is highly regulated to the point that the price you sell the unit of electricity is determined by government mm -hmm. not by market forces okay. whether it's in the area of petroleum products you cannot come in and build a refinery and know that you make your profit mm -hmm. and so there's no incentive to invest in our market so because even with the much talked about ease of doing business ease of doing business is a distinct thing from the nature of the market okay. ease of doing business simply means that free entry free exit exit mm -hmm. now to get your licenses mm -hmm. and all of those things okay it's different okay. from a market market that is highly regulated mm -hmm. to an extent that there's no incentive for anybody to invest here mm -hmm. that's that's another another factor but we're talking about the regulation for instance government allowing market forces to determine for instance if we look at the industry i mean the the oil and gas industry uh the, the, the petroleum sector for instance uh you know it is determined by the global now, now let me industry. let me government mm. uh, appears determined mm. to deregulate mm. the sector yet what they've done is partial deregulation okay i can tell you mm. now the other challenge is acute death of infrastructure oh. the e a r t h oh. now if you don't have infrastructure infrastructure number one is power oh. it is difficult oh. to industrialize oh. when you don't industrialize oh. we, we will remain exporters of oh. primary commodities or raw materials oh. and so we don't get the benefits oh. of the entire value chain the employment that will be created by the entire value chain and so if let's assume granite mm. from Kanu, mm. cocoa from ibadan mm. and so we export primary raw materials mm. now cocoa could be turned to several products yeah. chocolate mm -hmm. uh beverage mm. different things now of course imagine which, the kind of job import you know any, you can imagine any, the number of jobs any, that can create yes. now one of the constraints we have mm. suffered mm. is lack of infrastructure starting with power 
the road infrastructure is not there, rail to evacuate is not there. Government is going to put rail in place. Mm -hmm. And so we have the challenge of infrastructure. Now, the other challenge, which we have partially addressed, you say government is focusing on ease of doing business, mm -hmm. is corruption. Mm -hmm. That's a great disincentive to do business here. Now, do you know as you set up business, I don't like to go to the layman's language. Mm -hmm. As you set up business here, the local government will come after you, operational permit, multiple that permit, taxation. <coughs> multiple taxation. Mm -hmm. Now, and it's not like those things are going to government coffers. State government will come after you, federal government will come after you, multiple agencies will come after you. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, there is no incentive to even invest. You rather go Situation hmm. of our currency. I don't know how people will come, have confidence to invest in this sector. Indeed. And so, if you bring in, hmm. let's say, hundred thousand hmm. dollars, invest it in Nigeria, in Naira, obviously. Hmm. After two months, hmm. you may lose all your money hmm. because the hundred dollars that is you invested in Naira, hmm. the this thing would have now the exchange rates hmm. will have depreciated because hmm. the dollar. Doubled against so the lack United. of stability in the for absolutely mm. if a lot of fluctuation. Mm. So these are some of the challenges. Mm. So I think that government mm. needs to have a clear cut roadmap mm. of on how to deal with the economic challenges we face. Yeah. Okay. We have an issue at hand. For instance, Good. we require quick fixes to be able to recover from the, the, the current recession that we're talking about, even though the authorities are telling us that uh, it, it, is, it might not you know, stay for too long, perhaps maybe the first quarter of next year. Uh, these are just projections anyway. We have to have solid you know, uh, 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 strategies on ground to be able to recover. What are the quick fixes? You talk about corruption, which is fundamental. You know, Very fundamental. Eating deep into our ability to get out of, I mean, uh, to, to stabilize the economy. Uh, cost of governance is another fundamental challenge. Uh, uh, here we are with the COVID you know, disruptions and the declining oil revenue and all of that. How do we, what are the quick fixes now? Now, if you talk about quick fixes, I'll just take you to um, a few. Hmm. I'll just be specific about three. Okay. Now, one is the issue of power hmm. what is so complex that we cannot fix power we're it, talking about corruption not just corruption <laughs> corruption is one okay now one is that there is a disincentive to invest in power we liberalized power hmm. and yet people didn't inject new funds hmm. or relatively they injected a few did hmm. They didn't inject the kind of funds we expected that they were injecting power. Yeah. How come people injected in telecommunications? Mm. Because there's real competition. Mm. There's no competition in power. Even with the unbundling. Exactly. Okay. Please, mm. if we revisit power mm. and make sure we genuinely mm. deregulate power, mm. government leaves its stranglehold on power mm. and get the citizen to understand the implications, the end product of government's stranglehold on power. I believe that the citizens will show cooperation. But leadership do not necessarily mean that everybody will give you 100% cooperation. Let's tackle the issue of power. If we do, you will see that new industries will come up. Industrialization. Yeah. You will mm. see that we will create employment that will also take care of insecurity. Mm. A lot of major reason mm. why there is so much insecurity mm. is that majority of our young people are unemployed. That's right. And so if there is absence of where they can channel their positive energy, energy. To, they will channel it to negative right. activities. Um, okay. Talking about reviving the uh, comatose industries and then getting others on stream. Absolutely. Power is central. Yeah, power is central. Okay. And then the investments should be also strategic. Strategic. Okay. That's right. Um, okay. Uh, it's just one out of the several others, you know, that exactly. need to be done. Um, but then we have so many uh, other issues to talk about. Uh, I, wouldn't, I, I don't want to interrupt but we have to uh the polity now you know we are heading towards 2023 and there has been a lot of alignment and realignment postulations and so on and so forth uh the search for the Igbo presidency 
again <laughs> is on the table uh the south south which he came from you know uh is, is being um some see it as a new bride so to speak uh, the g g a g you know question and uh okay okay and, and i mean moving also into uh, throwing his hat uh, you know even though he didn't say officially but we're beginning to see some alignments and realignments uh wiki <laughs> the current governor you know is also said to have uh, some um, not since some ambitious you know to for the top top job um how are you <coughs> looking at all of these permutations well I, i'm worried mm. why am i worried we keep getting our politics wrong and for as long as we get our politics wrong mm. it will affect the quality of governance and by extension development mm. can we fix and i don't want to use <laughs> the words used by dr obi ezekwisili mm. that we actually need to fix our politics mm. and when we say fix our politics mm. it starts from the way we recruit leaders mm. the way we throw up leaders and the way we engage leaders and the quality of the leaders that we engage mm. now for as long as engagement of leaders or the election of leaders mm. will be based on the sentiment of tribe religion where you were born and then all of that will keep getting it wrong. Mm. I believe that every part of Nigeria should be accommodated at the mm. leadership cadre, and every tribe has somebody of quality that can lead this country. Mm. But the key emphasis should be on the quality of the person who will lead this country and lead us a right mm. to get to ensure that we achieve our most uh, enduring vision. Mm. You know, a leader who's got a mind to transform this country, mm. a leader who has character, who has what it takes, courage, clear vision mm. of how to transform this country, should be the primary consideration mm. in the election of a leader for the country. But how do we get there? Because we have some impediments. For instance, if you're talking about throwing the Quintus open for qualitative leadership, you know, and people who have the capacity, you know, to, to come on board, we will be talking about rotational presidency. One section has to take, you know, has to transfer power to another section after starting, you know, uh, uh, stay uh, on power. And again, we'll be talking about party affiliation, you know, this political party, that political party that are aligned with some of these interests we're talking about. How do we get, you know, a level playing ground, an open context that will give us the desired qualitative leaders that we want? You know, I've said two things here. Mm -hmm. I've said that I believe that leadership should be inclusive because we are a multi-ethnic and diverse society that technically speaking are in transition when it comes to democracy. Democracy is not as embedded as it is in Western countries or as in Europe. Now, even the Middle East nations or Arab nations are still, uh, their, model, their, their model, which is not democracy in the Western sense, is, is working. So, democracy in our own, if you adapt it to our peculiar mm -hmm. situation, um, should accommodate two important things. Okay. One, it should be inclusive, meaning that it should accommodate the different mm. ethnic interests, interests, mm. ethnic mm. groups, mm. and at the same time, should produce the best amongst us. So, but how do we do that? Now, how do we do that? Mm. If the country says, and I say the country now, I mean the institutions of the country, the constitution, the national assembly, of course, the political class says, okay, power to ensure that no part of this country is marginalized. Power should rotate between north and south. In the north, there are a lot of competent persons who can be president of Nigeria. In the south, there are a lot of competent persons. And so at the time, they say, okay, it is the southern part of the country made up of three geopolitical zones, south, 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 east, south, south. Please give us the best mm. and there's a method to throw up only the best mm. to put themselves forward mm. when it comes to mm. the thorn in quote mm. of the north mm. of the three zones in the north there are processes to throw up the best mm. and so we must accommodate those two factors okay as for as long as we're in transition after some time we we'll have gone past the transition period when an election to the office of president will be based purely on merit, merit yeah and capacity to deliver and capacity uh, to just, just like we see because if we're talking about diversities we are talking about multi uh, ethnic i mean uh, diversities and po 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 popularity also uh, the united states is an example and today they don't talk about 
where you come from. They talked about Absolutely. your capacity to deliver. Why is it difficult for us to do the same? Um, okay. Yeah, uh, but to tell you how they evolved over time, mm. it took more than 200 years after the practice of democracy for a man of black descent to become president of the United States. That's right. It's part of the evolution mm. of democracy in the United States. Mm. Okay, so we we'll get there sometime, you know. <laughs> uh, let, uh, we should get there quicker than, or, you know, yes. uh, as fast as we can. Okay, we're rounding up, but I, I need to ask you this question, you know. Uh, some will also be looking at the, uh, this book presentation, as you put it, perhaps as perhaps a launching pad towards 2023. I don't know. Uh, are you also considering, you know, throwing your heart in the in the race somehow in the presidency but not necessarily okay <laughs> <laughs> but are you are man you? by nature right is a political animal that's right society mm. whether we like it or not will always want the best to lead mm. they may not necessarily true of the best mm. but they truly want the best to lead now if i'm opportune to work with like-minded persons join forces with them to ensure that we get the best to lead this country mm. at every level mm. whether local government level mm. state level mm. and the federal level i will gladly participate okay and so if you ask me mm. i will tell you my options are open okay if you don't want to disclose them here no my <laughs> options are open okay that's right thank you very much uh dr the kuku peter side uh the immediate past director general and ceo of nimasa uh, together we'll be looking at uh, his uh, book presentation which is coming up uh, in, Gen in January, 20th ja precisely in January and um, a, a little bit of uh, uh, looking at also the economy and the polity we wish we had enough time perhaps to talk about Honestly. issues but then Honestly. Uh, subsequently we hope to, to have you back in the studio thank you very much thank you very thank much you. For, for having uh, for coming to the studio uh, to talk to us on his behalf and the technical crew my name is Jafir Suleiman have yourself a wonderful day ahead